Well, hello all. Happy New Year. Um, I thought I'd do something different for change. Uh, Brexit is almost upon us. Doom and hell turmoil, turmoil, I don't know. Bad stuff will happen apparently. So, but um, I'm prepared. What am I going to do? I'm going to show you how to make bread. Uh, one of those staple products would go really well with beer uh, and cheese and any other thing you want to do with it actually. Um, I've been uh, perfecting my art as you would say it as you, as you would do with beer but making bread recently as well and um, I don't think uh, I bought actually bought a white loaf in the household now for maybe two or three months so it's been good saving lots of money I mean um, I was to buy a loaf of bread from the shop it cost I mean really cheap nasty stuff from the supermarket cost about a pound but if you buy some stuff from an artisan bakery you're looking at something perhaps like up to three pound uh, maybe a bit more if you've got sourdough I've got sourdough though as well I, I use as well so um, I made some uh, sourdough pieces last night but I'm going to quickly whip through making a white loaf today hope that's all right if it's nothing that you're interested in at all please uh, come back some other time and I'll be making beer which I hope to be doing in the near future not just yet I've got a I've got a port when I've got an IPA sitting away fermenting at the moment so I want to obviously get those into cakes first and then I'll uh, get some beer done but anyway, anyway let me show you my ingredients and uh, we'll go from here so what have I got uh, I'm going to be making oh let me just get the tin yeah, I've got my tin um, this is my Ikea tin, That's something there, look, gives you an idea, um, quite cheap one, costs about five or something like that, it's got a scratch in it already, but we'll be using this later on, just to give you an idea what size loaf I'm doing, um, so I've got, uh, 750 grams of bread flour, it's some cheapy stuff I picked up from Aldi, which costs maybe, 30 40 pence for one and a half kilos. Um, 750. I've got um, 15 grams of sugar and 9 grams of yeast, instant yeast, so you don't have to rehydrate this one. Got some oil, I'll be sticking about maybe a um, ooh, how much? Maybe about a tablespoon of that in there. Got my scraper. It is an essential item, cost you about a pound from a local um, uh, cooking place. I can't remember the name of that, but anyway, it's down the road. And also I need 450 millilitres of water, which I'll quickly wear out now, and uh, we'll get what's mixed together. So I've skipped a little bit here, but what I did, I got all the ingredients, slapped them into there, and uh, stirred them all around a bit. I forgot to press the record button, didn't I? Um, and once you got it all together, uh, roll it out onto your worktop and then just start combining it really. Don't, don't bother about extra sticking extra flour on. All I found is it's normally per per perfectly adequate. It might get a bit sticky but who cares. And just start working it in. Um, I've got my own special technique but um, you haven't got to bother about as long as you're combining it. What I find is that you've got to bring it over and just push it back into itself. So you're just constantly scratching it. And I think most people say that they scratch, stretch out the gluten. Now you may find like here it's starting to get a bit sticky. Just rub it off and uh, let's carry on. You may find it'll stick to the table, but eh, that's what scrapers for. You just scrape it off the table, off the worktop. And off to go really. So yeah, you just keep working here. Some some people say about ten minutes. Um, I normally get bored about into about eight minutes in. I just leave it. Now you may find it'll get sticky, and see it's really sticking in my hands now. Um, don't bother about that really work it and eventually what you'll find is that it'll start it's just really sticky now it's fine I just keep working at it because what will happen the as it as the flour gets all nice and uh, hydrated in there it starts absorbing more of the water and 
and get all the get all the ingredients in there. Right, let's keep going. See, as you get more into it, it starts sticking to itself more and baking away. So it's just pulling off my fingers now quite easily. But this sticky doesn't matter. <laughs> you can just get it off your hands afterwards. And eventually you'll find, just give it a good mix up. Yeah, you can see I'm not professional. I haven't got any massive, any mega technique, but this is nothing. All you gotta do is keep stretching it. As well, when I'm making my sourdough and it's really sticky, I just keep doing this. I keep stretching it out. And just, you're just stretching the gluten, stretching all the, stretching the material. Get your scraper, scrape up your hands a bit. Any excess you can just wash off afterwards. But one thing I used to find when I used to make bread when I first started it, as soon as it started sticking to my fingers, the first instinctive thing I wanted to do is to go and start sticking flour on it. I gave it anxious because I thought it was all not going right, but you've got to try to resist that um, temptation and and eventually what you'll find is that the flowers start coming together. See now, after working through it a few, a bit more, it all starts getting a bit smoother now, and that stickiness just subsided, and then you get a nice. But I'm trying to get over, and I'm just combining it in, and. So last time, skip the scraper, get all the all your flowery bits, them together. Now, because you're using dry, if you're using dry yeast, if you've got wet yeast, it's obviously all combined already. But uh, when you've got dry yeast, you need to actually keep moving the yeast around inside the bread to obviously get combined in properly, and also the salt as well. One thing you can do with the salt, you can put the salt into the water and dissolve it into the water. That'll make things easier, help it dissolve more. I just combine it in, hopefully it will all there. Uh... But there we are, look. Um, so that's, that's your dough. I wouldn't fast around too much. I mean, there's some people who insist on Making it's got some sort. Make sure it's got some sort of window in effect going on, which it has. You can see it's like it's falling. It's not quite sticking together yet. But what I'll do later on down the line, in about half an hour's time, is we'll take it out and letterbox it. So that's it. Leave it in there for half an hour. And we'll come back to that soon. Coming back to this, actually, one thing. Uh, Two couple of things I have forgot. Um, I do have a little plastic box to stick my bread in. Um, what I do, we do, instead of stick it in a bowl, I just slap it into the plastic box. Um, serves two purposes, keeps it nice and sealed, it also gets a bit of heat in there. Um, so I just slap it in there, leave that for half an hour. Um, what I, then we have to do with this, I have to stick a bit of clinger film over the top of a cloth. 
Well, you don't want your bread drying out. You want it to be nice and uh, nice and cosy. But uh, yeah, that's where we are so far. Let's come back soon. Okay, so about thirty minutes down the line, uh, take your bread out. See, it's just starting to start to uh, swell up a little bit. Got something to want in it there. Right? Take that out. So all you have to do. Pop down to the work surface. You should chill again. What you do is knock it down, docks a bit of the knocks a bit of the um knocks the bubbles out and stuff like that. You just stretch it right out like this. And do want that in there. So once you've got it stretched out like this, you just fold it up. It's called letterbox in. I think French do it quite a lot. And what it does is just builds the structure in the bread. And also when you when when you uh, bake it off later on, it'll it'll rise much better, and you get much you won't have any where it flops down or anything. So once you've done that, you stick it back in there, you leave it about another hour, and then we will come to the next stage where we just stick it into the bread tin. Okay, so it's been about another, maybe, ooh, what would I say, maybe an hour and a half. And you can see it really has swelled up now. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to get this uh, baking tin. I'm not going to stick all in there. Just the tiny out of the burns. Just sprinkle a bit of flour in. Just to help it not stick. Um, Shake it around a bit and then just ch chuck off any excess, which in the sense stick, not stick on the top of your bread. So I'll put that there, I'll just knock it out here, see if it'll come out. No. So we just get our trusty scraper, as you can see, you see it just where so it comes out anyway. See it all sticks together, it's got good, it's nice and strong, it's holding its bonds quite very well there. Right? I found that's just from just doing the folding on it. So next thing I do, just checking your frame there, is just knock this down flat. Stick just a little bit of flour underneath here. So I just pull it out so it's the same width as the um, as the bread tin. Stretch a bit out of the side there, just get it even, so I'll fold those bits in there. Still trying to stretch that so it's the same width as the bread tin. Knock it in, get it nice and tight there as you go around, and then you should have a kind of a shoshish shape. You might have a bit of some uh, bubbly bits that I've got there, and let's pop in the bread tin. Okay, so I'm just going to cover this up now with a uh, tea towel, and I'll leave that do, leave it do its stuff for about, give it about another, um, maybe another half an hour. I'm going to pop to the shop, so I'll be back in a while, and it should be just about up to here. Then It'll rise about another inch or so, and then we can uh, see about shoving it in the oven. And then goes with that without saying. You can just do this in the time that you've got with it in the day. You don't need to do it all at once. It's, you can just work it in around what you do. Uh, if you find that, um, oh, it's being back to me. There. Now if you find that um, it's rising a bit too quick, you always chuck it in the fridge, and I'll just stir it down a bit. But um, normally I can just knock it while he's out in the evening or in the afternoon. I can do it now. But, uh, right, so let's wait till it rises a bit more and uh, we'll see, see about baking it. Okay, so we're getting there. Uh, you can see it's risen by that extra inch now. Um, it's not as high as it will go, because when I stuck it into the, into the oven, it'll actually rise, it'll shoot up by a bit more. But what I'm going to do now is to grab a razor blade. <laughs> so what you need to do, it gives it a bit of a pretty pattern, but what I'm going to do now is just get get the top and it's going to score it right across the top here, cut nice and deep, don't be uh, 
Let's see, let's see you get a nice little get in the get right in there. Um, I'm going to do that right across the top here. What you do is pull it back a bit and just cut right in, nice and deep. Don't be uh, don't, don't be timid with it. Cut nice and deep there. It should hold its own. It won't shouldn't go down too much. If you can, you more or less cut level with the, level with the uh, panel here. Maybe just a little bit higher. What you can hear in the background is I'm boiling the kettle. Um, okay, so that's almost ready to go. Comes to me. So what I have done, I've uh, preheated my oven up to about 200 centigrade. Um, it's all going to happen quite quick, but what, what I'll do, I'll heat up the oven to that temperature. Um, and when it hits that temperature, I've got a pan, I've got a pan there already, like a, like a, a small designer behind the metal one. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to toss a load of boiling water into that pan. And then I'm going to shove the bread in and just leave it at that. At 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 leave it with door, door closed and that, all that was maybe about uh, two cups of water in there. I'm going to leave it at a temperature for about uh, 10 minutes. In that time, the uh, bread's going to really just rise straight up. Uh, and also, uh, because you stuck some steam in there, you also get a bit of a bit of a hard coat on it. In that time, uh, it's a bit of a black heart, I must admit, because I, I've done it a few times. It just doesn't do it. But the most important thing is that you get get the bread, get the sit, get the water in there, get the steam in there being generated straight away, and close the, get the bread in there and close it really, and close it really quickly. Right, let's just do that now. Okay, so the oven's up to almost up to it. My my gauge is just slightly out, but it's about one seven five. That's about two hundred. I can tell by just pulling the uh, thermometer down that it's right. As you can see, I got a pan in there and I got a shelf ready to get take the bread. So let's do that. So I've got my bed ready, shove it all in there, close the thing very quickly. <laughs> okay, so it started beeping. Uh, as you can see now, look, it's all sprung up. Oh, I'll take it out. So it's all sprung up, they're all looking low feet. I'll just twizzle it round and see this. Cancel the timer, bring it down to about 175, give it 10 minutes. Okay, and uh, we'll repeat this again now in another 10 minutes. And uh, that will be 30 minutes in total, and then our bread will be ready. Okay, so until my next 10, my 10 minutes is up, I'm going to do is just quick take the bread out. See, it's coming on really well. Twist it round, close the oven up again. Give it another maybe seven minutes and I'll show you what I'll do after that time. So seven minutes down the line, uh, <coughs> final thing I need to do is I'll show you what we're gonna do. Take the bread out and we're gonna knock it out to the knock it out of the case. Just so the bottom gets cooked properly. I think it's done anyway, but we just turn it around facing towards the fan and we'll leave it like that for another three minutes. Number three, and then we'll be done. Done. So yeah, so yeah, it's ready. Let's close it out of the oven and uh, show you a final product. So there we go, a loaf of bread, eh? It's um, come up. nice and crunchy on top. Um, what they do say is you could bang the bottom, it should sound a bit hollow. But I found this cooking for that time is generally a surefire way to make sure it's fine. Um, as you can see, it's expanded a bit out of the sides here. But also, that's the reason I cut on the top here. So, what you can find is if you if you don't, um, what you can find is if you don't cut the top here, this will explode outside. So you can see here, it has actually come out a little bit of the side here. But 
apart from that, I think it's uh, a good loaf. Um, this will last a couple of days on the house and um, no, it, sh it should all work out fine. So what I'm going to do now, I've got a, um, down the bottom here, look, I've just got a, the grill pan here. I'm just going to let, let it dry out a little bit here. And that's about it. So please like, subscribe and share. Uh, say if you want to see me cooking anything anymore. I do cook other stuff. I mean, I, I, I'm really into making a lot of bread at the moment, but uh, I also like, um, what's the other stuff? I make sourdough breads. Uh, I like making curries and stuff like that. I don't think that's, that's very interesting really. But uh, there's a few other dishes. But I don't want to become a homebrew Craig or like that. He does his cooking and you can watch him do all this type of stuff. But I, I'm enjoying doing this. Um, I'm, so I'm, I may actually show you some, some, some of the old sourdough stuff as well. It's got a slightly different technique and the, the, con the constituency, the, uh, obviously the, um, what is it? Um, it's a bit more sticky and a bit, bit, bit more, it takes a bit longer because it takes a bit longer to rise and stuff. My sourdough yeast that I made myself, it does actually uh, spring really well actually, it does actually come up quite well. But you still have to wait a lot, lot more time. I normally um, might make the mixture in the evening and then uh, leave it overnight and then do it a day later. It's a bit more of a bath. Um, yes. So that's about it. Um, I may actually cut this up and do a section of it, but um, I can generally say it looks fine, it tastes great. Um, it's the recipe, I've taken this recipe from a Mary Berry book um, and I've uh, factored it up a bit for the sizes I use. And uh, uh, that's about it really. I may, I've actually annotated in the recipe, but at the start I used uh, salt, not sugar, uh, yeah, but um, you'll see that anyway. And I'll leave the recipe down below and a little bit of the method as well, some of the, the numbers and things. Anyway, that's me for today. Um, some things uh, to note I mean, you can make beer out of bread, hey, anyway. uh, there's never any of my bread left over to actually use to make bread, so uh, uh, don't do that much. And. Uh, my sourdough yeast, I've actually used that to make um, make some sour beers I made, which uh, I'm going to put some into competition hopefully in the National Homebrew, which is coming up in a few weeks' time. Uh, but that's got obviously packed with lactobacillus plus other yeast and stuff like that. So that actually did, um, did quite a good job at sour, kept sour beer. There we are. Okay, see you all. Bye.